Hey there again, fellow mitochondriac. It's Dr. Peebler for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. So I hope you enjoyed the last video about ketosis and ketogenic diets for cancer. I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the GKI or the glucose ketone index that Dr. Seafried and his group had created. And in the last time we talked about how you could potentially calculate your GKI based off of this formula right here, where you take glucose and milligrams per deciliter and make the conversion and then you divide by the ketones and millimoles and you're able to find out what your GKI is. And and it's pretty cool because on the, the Keto Mojo website, I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller so you can see what the full URL is. But on the Keto Mojo website, it actually has a conversion tool that is free. So in this sense, we'll talk about what the goal GKI is. I went ahead and put together a sample glucose and ketone reading so we could achieve our 1.0 GKI. So this has a, a glucose of 70 and then a ketone reading of 3.9 millimoles per liter. And this is also from the Keto Mojo website. It actually has the less than one, basically you're in the highest level of therapeutic ketosis. And it says that this is very difficult to achieve without doctor supervision. And then one to three, you're in a very high level of ketosis. And that's particularly important for people who are looking for a therapeutic ketogenic diet for cancer, epilepsy, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, TBI, and chronic inflammatory diseases. And then three to six would be a moderate level of ketosis. That's for people who are just trying to like lose weight and, and improve their diabetes. And then six to nine, a, a very low level of ketosis. I still think this could be very useful to be in a weight loss situation because your insulin is going to be low. You're going to be in a, a more ideal environment for weight loss. And then if it's greater than nine, it's con you're considered not in ketosis. So this is based off of the Press Pulse paper that Dr. Seafried and his group published. And we're going to talk at length about the Press Pulse protocols when it comes to metabolic therapy for cancer. But I just wanted to highlight, since we're talking about the GKI, that it says here that GKI values of one or below are considered therapeutic, though therapeutic benefit appears to be associated with more with ketone bodies and suppression of insulin than reduced glucose. However, the elevation of ketone body levels is generally greater when blood glucose levels are lower than when blood glucose levels are higher. And then therefore the GKI can serve as a biomarker to assess the therapeutic efficacy of various diets in a broad range of cancers. And as we discussed last time, we can calculate these GKIs based off of using a very basic blood glucose monitor, finger stick monitor, and a blood finger stick ketone monitor, and then make the calculations because this is based in milligrams per deciliter, and this is in millimoles per liter. We have to do the conversion calculation. The same could be done using a CGM or a continuous glucose monitor, such as this Freestyle Libre 2, and then another blood ketone monitor. And then and as we talked about in the last video, also Keto Mojo, their sensor that they use uses one drop of blood to get both glucose and ketone levels. And then it'll self-calculate on your app, your GKI at that particular time. And then as we talked about, it can be sent to your, your practitioner, your doctor, and our electronic medical records for monitoring of your GKIs over time. I just want to go back to this, that this is a pretty cool tool that if you just have nothing more than a cheapo blood glucose monitor and a blood ketone monitor, that you can self-calculate this without having to do any fancy math. You just plug in your glucose reading at that time and your ketone levels at that time, and it'll automatically calculate your GKI. And we're going to talk further about metabolic therapies, but remember that the, the keto diet or a ketogenic diet, but in particular, a therapeutic medical ketogenic diet is what is the foundation of metabolic therapies for cancer. And and this is just the start. There are several other additional therapies that have to be added for maximum efficacy, but this is the important part. One piece of, I guess, contention I have with Dr. Seafried and the way he describes a therapeutic ketogenic diet is that he says that as long as your GKI is where we want it to be, he doesn't care what you eat. I disagree fully with that. I do believe nutrient quality really makes a big difference. I could eat nothing but canola oil and have a low GKI, but have excess amounts of omega-6, which are very pro-inflammatory. So I do believe that the type of ketogenic diet that you do select does matter quite a bit. So we're going to talk about that in the future, about the types of foods that would be ideal on a ketogenic diet because there are lots of anti-cancer foods and nutrients within foods that we do not want to miss out on. So if you think these kind of videos are valuable, if they're helpful to you, if it helps give you practical tips on how to lower your GKI and maintain a therapeutic ketogenic diet for your metabolic therapy program, then please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time.